You know, when Donald Trump became president, it was already an unusual moment because we had a billionaire who was coming into office. Then when he decided to carry his whole business with him into the White House, it was the first time that we had this experiment and no one knew what was going to happen. You know, what happens when you take a billion dollar business and you bring it into the White House? So somebody said, why did you appoint a rich person to be in charge of the economy? And what happens when you take the White House and the presidency and politics and impose it upon a billion dollar business? And what we've seen in the last few years is the results of that experiment uh, coming in on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. From the start of 2017 through all of 2018 to the end of 2019, if you add all of Trump's revenue, that adds up to $1.9 billion. So three years, $1.9 billion. Now, Revenue means all of the money that's coming into your business. So everything that people are paying. This is not necessarily you know, money that's landing in Donald Trump's pocket. Because remember, there's a lot of expenses that he has to pay. So if you break down the $1.9 billion and you say, all right, let's look at Trump's business. Now, he owns a lot of different assets. Okay, We're talking about you know more than a dozen golf properties. He owns a bunch of commercial real estate buildings in New York City. He owns hotels. So you sort of have to put them in segments. And the first segment that you can look at is sort of the golf courses and clubs. So this is Mar-a-Lago, Doral. He's got three properties over in Europe and a bunch of golf courses in the United States. If you add all of that revenue up over three years, that's about $753 million. So a ton of money coming in through the golf businesses and the club business. The next biggest segment is the commercial real estate. So this is, you know, the retail space in Trump Tower, the office space in 1290 Avenue in the Americas, the office space in 555 California Street. Most of his commercial real estate is still in New York City, but there are some exceptions. The biggest one, of course, is he owns a 30% stake in 555 California Street in San Francisco. You never hear about this asset, but believe it or not, it's the most valuable asset in his entire portfolio. It just doesn't have his name on it. And so people don't talk about it a lot. Then the next thing is if you look at sort of the licensing and management and the hotels businesses. So these are different businesses. This could be Trump lending his name to somebody who wants to build a tower in Turkey. Uh, It could be Trump lending his name to somebody who wants to sell mattresses. It could also be Trump running a hotel in Washington, D.C. or running a hotel condo complex in Las Vegas. If you sort of mesh all that together, the licensing and the hotel businesses. And the reason that you mesh them together is because a lot of the licensing is in hotels. So you put that whole segment together, that's about $411 million. The next thing are the asset sales. So yes, Donald Trump became president. He handed over management day-to-day responsibilities to his kids, but he still owns the properties that he owned before. And many of those properties he's been selling off as he's been president. These are small deals. They don't get a lot of attention. But if you add up all those transactions, and there are more than 100 of them from 2017 through 2019, that's another $118 million that Donald Trump has taken in. And then the final one is what we term other. Um, I think that Trump the game is going to be a hit because it's Trump and everything he does seems to turn into gold. This is kind of a grab bag. So Donald Trump does a lot of crazy stuff in business. So he sells books. He runs a skating rink in Central Park. He runs restaurants in Trump Tower, at his golf club in Doral. Uh, He has a carousel in Central Park. He does all these sort of random things. If you lump all that stuff into one last category, that's about $91 million. So then you take your math question, you say, all right, so we've got $1.9 billion. We've split it into all these different segments. Now let's dive into each one of those segments and figure out how much of that money actually turns into profit. You know, Trump's hotels and his golf businesses get a ton of headlines because they're visible. You can walk into them. They're, you know, interesting. They're dynamic, all of that. But if you look at his profits, and we're measuring this by earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So if you look at that and you add it up over three years, we're estimating it's about $470 million for the whole for the whole portfolio. Now, here's where uh, it gets interesting. So $313 million of that is from the commercial real estate business. That's because it's a really, really profitable business. You don't have that many expenses 
when you just own a building and you're renting it out. You gotta hire a guy, you know, downstairs to check people's IDs. You have to hire some maintenance people to clean up. But that's, you know, about it. There's not all that much stuff that you have to do. If on the other hand, you look at the golf business, which takes in the most revenues, $570 million, and only turns $85 million, is our estimate of those in operating profits, that's a business that takes a ton of work. Same thing with the hotel, low margin business. You've got to pay, you've got to clean somebody's sheets every night. You know, you've got to have a restaurant there. You've got to make sure that everything looks perfect at all times. And it's not, you know, people don't necessarily treat hotels like they treat their offices. So your, your cleaning expenses are going to be more. And that means that your profit margins are going to be less. So if you look at the profitability of the whole enterprise, we've got 313 million for the commercial real estate, $85 million for the golf courses and clubs, $60 million for the hotels, licensing and management, and then about $12 million for everything else. There's a lot still to learn and a lot to look at. Um, I just finished up my book, and so that means that I, which is called White House Inc., and it's all about Trump's business. You know, you start a book and you think, oh, I'm gonna, you know, figure out the full story of Trump's business. You can't figure out the full story. The story never ends. It keeps going, it's an operating business, and there's always more and more to look at.